Hello everyone, and welcome back to our weekly tarot draw. I want to take a moment to thank everyone for your kind comments and support in my last video. I'm really happy that a handful of you like the video and are interested in turning it into a series because it was something that I thought would be really fun to do. So, we are returning once again to the classic Rider Tarot deck. I might mix it up next week with one of my other decks, but I thought it would be nice to stick with the classics as we start out this series. Since the Rider Tarot deck is one of the uh, most popular, I would say well-known decks as far as imagery goes. So, let's begin. By getting the cards out. Make sure I have all the cards. Okay, perfect. And same as last time, I'm going to take a moment to ground my energy. And if you're watching this as well, whether it's to know what the cards have, or maybe you're just watching to relax, either way, a quick grounding is just the thing. So we'll take a moment. And we'll shut our eyes and then we'll breathe in through our nose and out through the mouth and you can repeat that a few times and just let your energy levels drop let your heart rate slow your breathing to become very natural and calm and now I'm going to just tap into the energies of the universe, which includes every single one of you watching right now. And as I do that, I will shuffle. Again, I'm not a fancy shuffler, so, but that's okay. When it comes to tarot, you don't need to be a fancy shuffler. You don't need to own a bunch of fancy decks or have all the cards memorized or even know a lot of layouts. It's really about your own personal experience and journey with it and I've come to realize that's true with a lot of things um, whether it's you know yoga or cycling or running or any type of sport those are the sports that I do um, even meditation you know we sometimes get wrapped in our heads thinking there's the right way to do something and we have to do it that way but as long as you're not hurting someone or yourself, there is no right way, you know, everyone has their own way. So, let's see, what do the cards want to tell us this week? What can we think about? What can we consider? We have some noisy cars outside, so I apologize for some of the edits. feels good. This feels like a good stopping point. I'm going to once again, I'm not going to cut the deck, I'm going to go with the top card because as I shuffled, this one kind of popped onto the top. So, let's see. Ooh. <laughs> it's so funny, whenever I see a card that isn't outright positive, I have this moment of put it back. But, that's not how Tara works. So we have here, this is the, let me do my Roman numerals, the Eight of Swords. And I'm sure as you look at it yourselves, you probably have a similar um, emotion as me. And I'm sorry, I'm looking away. I pulled a card for myself um, not that long ago, uh, just for my altar that I have. And it was the Eight of Swords, but with a different deck. Um, so, this is interesting for myself, and maybe it resonates for some of you. So, like I said, initial impression, I'm sure just looking at it, it doesn't look like the most positive card, but one can find um, positive meanings in um, everything, you know, or at least helpful, constructive things. 
So you can see from the image there is a woman, though if you imagine yourself it can be any gender of course, um, and she's blindfolded and tied up, and there's all those swords surrounding her. So um, already just from looking at this, my first moment was constriction. I felt when I looked at it, I felt my heart constrict similar to how she's all tied up. And um, this card is definitely about constrictions and being wrapped up in sort of your own drama, your own fears and anxieties. There's a feeling of being trapped, um, which of course is never pleasant, but sometimes we have to acknowledge that we are trapped. A lot of times we are the ones that are tying ourselves down. We are the ones that are being blinded to the truth, um, to what needs to be done, what inner work can be basically worked on, for lack of a better word, especially during this time where a lot of us are by ourselves, we're inside, there's a lot of internal work being done. So I'm going to read the description of the card and then we can talk a little bit more about what it might mean. Um, someone had recommended also mentioning the reverse meanings of the cards. I, that is a thing. Maybe it's because I'm a beginner, but I don't really mess with reversed meanings. Not only are they not listed in my handy tarot Bible, which I rely on for a lot of my interpretations. Um, generally, reverse doesn't necessarily mean the opposite. It's usually a different twist or perception of the card. Um, this is from the little bit of reading I've done on it in the past. Uh, and because some of my decks just get so mangled, um, I don't usually do reverse readings, but if it's something that the majority of you want to hear in the future, um, I can always like pause the video and like look it up online or something because I wouldn't know off the top of my head to be totally honest. Or I can leave it in the description bar. So we're just going to go for the upright meaning. That's what I usually tend to go with. Um, just want to put that out there because I thought it was a good suggestion, but I wanted to express what was going on with that. So the Eight of Swords. All right, and I'll have the pop-up of the image. Keywords. Restriction. Self-sabotage. Self-sabotage. Isolation. Vulnerability. Key phrases. Feeling fenced in. Lack of freedom to choose. Feeling trapped and bound by a situation. Waiting to be rescued. Scattered ideas in no direction. Feeling powerless or victimized. Floundering and feeling bound by your own illusions. So yes, yeah, some frightening words, but I'm going to read a little bit more about this and then I'm pretty sure what the book is going to say is a similar thought I'm having that we'll work with together. Notice that most of the key phrases for the Eight of Swords are about feeling yet it is our concepts, ideas, mentality, and thoughts that bind us to our feelings and in turn create those very personal dilemmas and problems. The woman on the card could easily free herself if she made the effort, but it is almost as if she is sabotaging her chances to move on by remaining restricted because it's easier to do so. I've definitely been there before. Um... This card can imply that it is hard work to wriggle out of those ropes, to struggle through the swords of illusion, and often easier to flounder in a state of vulnerability in the hope that someone will come along and rescue us. But this card suggests, suggests that you need to focus and define clarity, rather than assume you'll find someone to rescue you, rescue you, you from your victimized feelings. It's a typo in this book. <laughs> Unfortunately, no one can rescue us from ourselves. Solutions aren't easy, but they are there. And if you open yourself to possibilities, you won't have to play the victim either. These are very real events for us, and we feel trapped, confused, and unable to shift. Remember, you do have choices, and there is a way out if you use the power 
of objectivity and clear thinking. Free yourself from your troubles by letting go of the concepts or ideas to which you are attached. So I think a lot of us can relate to this. And actually, to be honest, I've been having a on a personal level a rough couple of days where it's like silly little things but I can feel this mounting anxiety so the card is some more um I'll keep a card up next to me um this mounting anxiety and this feeling of kind of a restlessness but it's deeper than just like a stir crazy I'm stuck in the house restlessness it's like a internal thing And that can be scary and it can suck and maybe some of you at home are also feeling scared about the situation, stuck at home, feeling your own doubts and fears, you know, manifesting. And the important thing to remember, like the book said, is a lot of this is coming from the self. There are these outside forces, but a lot of this is things that we are manifesting by almost deceiving ourselves that there's no escape there's no way out it's hopeless so in a way this card does have a little bit of hope in the sense that it's a good reminder of these feelings you're feeling they're valid they're real of course but you have the power to free yourself those ropes these um that are around her they're not even ropes they look like flimsy fabric and those swords that are trapping her in She can use those to her advantage. She can use that sword, lean against it to free herself. So we can even use the things that are holding us back in life to our benefit. So I hope that even though it was a little bit of a, you know, intense card, um, that we can all take the positive from it and know that there is some work we can do with ourselves but that there's no pressure or rush. You know, everyone should take things at their own pace and that we have it in our own hands to free ourselves of those things that tie us down and hold us back. So with that said, that's just my own little spin on it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, Let me know in the comments below. Um, how this card relates to how you've been feeling lately or even your own interpretation of what this card means in general or for you. So, um, yeah, (laughs) thanks for watching. Bye.